So we are live on YouTube. Oh, great. You go, go, go. Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the WWJ Wednesday Web Jam number 112. So I hope you all of you have had a nice holidays and rests. And today we will have uh, with us Harun. Uh, van der Weide uh, uh, to talk and share uh, share and inspire uh, inspire us uh, about the the link between between storytelling and design thinking. First, just some 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 notes. So this session will be recorded and or broadcasted in, in YouTube. So if you have any kind of, of of situation regarding that, you you can turn off your your camera and also just to advise uh, advise you that uh, sometimes we we take some pictures of the screens in order to to share our insights and talks and conversations in in Instagram or LinkedIn, etc. So uh, if there is any kind of problem or situation. Uh, please turn off your camera camera or let us know in order for us to act accordingly okay so these are the gdpr uh, status uh, guidelines for you and now welcome in an official well welcome everybody to the wednesday web jam uh, after after party holiday session so uh, I miss you guys. So I'm here hosting for for the first time. So I'm failing forward. So uh, I will fail it, uh, will fail forward. So thank you so much for being here. And today I, I, I'm really excited because we have a, a topic that is I think it is very important for us in terms of design thinking and creativity. And first of all, uh, I think you uh, also know our motto. So it's failing forward. There is no other way. So there will be a lot of experiment chaos uh, and some conversations, activities, and perhaps fine tunings and new ideas for us to take to our lives and jobs. So this is a space of kindness. So let us try to enhance everybody's capabilities, experiences, stories, and reflections. And for that, we can be empathetic. That is of course, one of the major accomplishments of the design thinking in today's world. Well. Just a brief, brief, brief presentation of our guests, and then I will share, I will take him into the stage. So today we have Haroen uh, uh, van der Weide. I hope Haroen, I pronounce it well. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So I'm improving in my Dutch. That's that's a plus. So uh, he's a managing partner at Design Thinking Academy Amsterdam and at Design Thinkers mm -hmm. Agency, and also uh, works with design thinking and, and other, I would say, uh, gravitational activities in training, consulting, and I'm basically he will share uh, today with us how storytelling and its components and structures can enhance and can develop design thinking, both in terms of methodologies, in terms of empathy with our customers and users, and how can we identify value and pains and gains. Okay, for for now, I will leave you with Harum. Harum, thank you very much for, for coming and to sharing your insights with us. I will unshare my screen and I will prompt you in order to, to share with us your insights. And thank you so much for being here. And the stage is yours. Thank you, Hugo. You did a great job. And it's good to see that. But yeah, big applause to Hugo. And... Um, it's good to see so many familiar faces. And yes, today I want to just share some things I learned long ago. In the previous century, I studied at a university in Nijmegen, um, theater, movies, and some communications. Well, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Um, and that's funny. Um, I always thought that I wouldn't use what I uh, learned in those days nowadays. But in fact, studying that uh, the history and the craftsmanship of creating theater and making movies is still useful. In that way, that storytelling really, start, for me, started over there in those days. And no, I never made really big movies or played in many theater. Nevertheless, there are still some interesting things to share. And that's what I'm going to do today. Um, but before we're going to do that, I want to give you the opportunity to 
chat for max five minutes. So let's make some breakout rooms and put three people in a row, uh, together. In, and just having that simple question, what did you do yesterday? As the prompt to meet each other, talk with each other, but make sure that you explain what you did yesterday. Are you ready for it? Okay. Have so fun. Think, Just five minutes. Yeah. Mimp will send you to hyperspace. So have a nice oh. conversation. It, it's I not me. It's Yun Yen. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's <a> Yun Yen's <laughs> face okay. going, oh. <laughs> yeah. I started failing forward uh, six minutes <laughs> on the right. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Yun Yen. E. Okay. I mean, yeah. what did you do yesterday? Ah, uh, what did I do yesterday? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I, uh, I I yeah. watched a uh I think I I, I watched Seinfeld for the first time on Netflix. It it was oh, really? uh, it was a nice ninety show. <laughs> it was a I because I was watching I was watching Friends a lot and I, I still watch it but it's mm -hmm. like oh I want something I want to try something new and then uh Janice from Friends who, who who somebody who plays Janice from Friends is on Seinfeld so I'm like oh this this must be a good show too so yeah it's like a stand-up comedian who who narrates mm -hmm. the show so it could be part of the storytelling that you're gonna be mentioning so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I that's the one thing I remember I did yeah Okay, and I can see Adina is back in the uh, plenary room because you were only you were the only one in room number three, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and now Cecile, so but if you want, you can go back to room number three because Cecile will, uh, is there waiting for you. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Mim, for sharing. And Hugo, what you, did you do yesterday? Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, let, let us welcome Horia because he just joined us. Uh, hi, Horia. So we are uh, putting people in breakout rooms in order to share what people have done yesterday. So can I ask you, Yen, to send Horia to um, a room, please? Let me Thank try. You, yep. Hey. Let me try. Yes, I'll <clears throat> take care of that. Let's see. Well, Sunyan does that. Hugo, what did you do yesterday? Uh, so yesterday, hmm, uh, yeah, because I I I I was was also blanked, but uh, I, I was in the coffees creating contents and and doing some bureaucratic stuff. Uh, at the end of the day, I went to the beach, and then I had uh, had dinner with my father. So. And in the morning, I don't remember what I've done. Sorry, I really don't. <laughs> That's already know? so long ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ages. It feels like yesteryear. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that that the way we well, if I were to explain it as well, it's more in, in, in a logical way. Although, thanks, Hugo, you started mid and ended in the mornings, but most of the time people tend to use that clock to share what they did yesterday. Although it's it's quite a generic question. You can also say me met people, had a nice time, and felt relieved at the end, for instance. But mostly we tell what we did, really did, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah, it's more about productivity, uh, things that we have done and not being uh, things that we have felt or things that we have yeah. just experienced. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. And and that's that's what we're gonna, of course, um, focus on a little bit more in this session, this web jam, because let's see if we can talk about yesterday or in a different way what it really means. Besides what you did, what was the experience or the, the habits or the behavioral part of it? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's true because, for example, when, when, you, when you meet someone for <clears> the first time, one of the first questions or the first one is, what do you do? No, not what do you like, which are the things that uh, you are passionate about yeah. or what are your, the things yeah. that, uh, I don't know, uh, create some kind of inner fire or, or gives, give you some, some, some bumps. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's more about the, the practicality of, the, of, the, of life and not about the essence of life yet. Yeah. I do relate with that. Although, yeah. although asking how are you doing can immediately bring that emotional state to me. Yes. I, I, I usually say how are you feeling because that will really tap into like how people feel. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But okay. The... One minute. I'm going okay. to get, I'm going to close the rooms now and they come back within one minute. Thank you, Yuyan. Yeah, but I think it would be exotic if uh, the first question that I, I, I would do to a person that I, that I have just met was, how are you feeling? It's strange, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's <laughs> a bit more tense or maybe too like direct it's, it's, or... It's... Yeah. So. Mm. Or just, who are you? So that's a simple question to be answered, right? Mm. <laughs> oh gosh, that's like who am I? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that's the reaction I get sometimes. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. I feel like people don't want to come back. People are having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they have to. Welcome <clears throat> back. I hope you have the opportunity to meet each other and to exchange what we, you have done yesterday, but also how you, I don't know, felt or what did you experience. But I will let uh, Caron to continue that link and conversation. So thank you, Hugo. Yes, indeed. Just by raising that simple question, what did you do yesterday? We already practiced that same question in our group and realizing that you can answer that in many ways. Of course, on the more practical way, what did you really do at eight, nine, 10 o'clock and so on? Or what did it brought you? What was the feelings you got? How do you, did you feel about it? Um, but at the same time, you know, we all are natural storytellers because such a question is enough for us to meet each other, isn't it? At least that's what I'm hoping for in what happened in the breakout rooms as well. We can start a story without any structure at all. Although, if you want to make an impactful story, you can perhaps use some, some, some guidance. And that's what I want to share with you today in the web jam. Um, um, just a simple, short introduction um, when it comes to, oh, hold on, of course, good timing. Someone's calling me. Um, a short introduction about storytelling. Starting this way. It's funny. The, uh, George Palti did a study 100, uh, 120 years ago, checking all kind of opera, the Greek antique stories and all kind of different kind of stories in Western Europe mainly. And he started to understand, realize that there was, were only 36 ways to tell a story. 36 dramatic situations. And later on, uh, Mike uh, figures wrote that book too, and it's uh, it's translated in, in in Dutch too. And the funny thing is, after uh, that one hundred years, they they haven't found uh, an additional chapter so far. So in some way, he touched upon something. So it can be interesting to look at your uh, about your summary of yesterday, in which dramatic situation that would fit. But we can continue the countdown. There's also a really interesting book, 22 Way Steps to Create a Story, and a really thick, oh, hold on, a really thick book. And this is what, seven basic, pl basic plots. You can really 
summarize, converge all those things you did yesterday, bring you back to these seven ways to, to talk about it. Looking to Hollywood, it's even more simple. They like that number of three a lot. It's, and that's what I studied. This, this is more or less the structure of any well-designed Hollywood movie. You've got that introduction, something's happening, no one can change anymore, so you have to continue fighting, finding, searching, whatsoever, it becomes worse and worse, and at a certain moment, the collapse is there, and the relief at the end. Happy endings are always out in Hollywood. That was the, and this is a script of 90 minutes. And it's really true that around 60 minutes, you've got that point number two starting. And only uh, the, the, the final minutes are there to, uh, after the climax to really have that resolution. So you can also look at a story in this simple way, by those three. And by the way, three is really the magic number. Um, still remember how many times, uh, how many sisters went to the ball when it was to Cinderella? How many times did they try to fit that shoe? Three times. Christmas Carol, it's about that past, present and future. The three little pigs, the nephews of Donald Duck, it always comes to three. So that's also an interesting one. But of course, you all know a bit as well, this, 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 the, the, the hero's journey. You cannot uh, summarize any story as well in this grid, if you want. It's that adventure that starts somewhere and you grow into it and there's a point of no return. So you have to continue. And at the end of that story, you have changed in such a way that a story starts again in a new way. Storytelling is really, really, in some way, really easy. When, when you try to bring that down to the business situation, some people say it's also that balance between instruction and inspiration. It's that balance, that delicate balance between being instrumental and more emotional. And, and, and if you've got some kind of sense of imagination, everything can come to reality. So storytelling isn't that hard. And if you really want to talk about it, keep it simple. And that's what I want to do as well. I'm going to use two things today, which I learned from Hollywood. They like to keep it simple because that will bring the money much faster in. And we will know this guy, isn't it? He claims to say, if I meet someone such a script writer, and he only needs one or two sentences to explain what his movie, his script is about, his movie is about, it probably will be a pretty good movie. If he needs 10 minutes to explain about a hero, about the situations whatsoever, then people, then uh, Steven Spielberg said, thanks, I'm not interested. This is only the premise. It's that one or two sentences, that summary of the story to be told in only five words. The premise is key when it comes to creating stories. And I want to share with you some examples of, of movies and probably you know them. Let's see if, let's, let's check out. And I will fade out for a while because those pictures are much nicer. Who have seen Tenet? And please put in the chat what you think is the premise of Tenet. And just put it in because um, it's, 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 it's good to talk about this, shortly about this uh, movie. Um, it's the movie two years ago, three years ago now. What would you say is that summary? What's the story about? What's the premise of Tenet? Any idea? I don't yeah, see so any suggestions. Who saw, the, who saw the movie? Yeah, just put it on, on the chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And time Which, reverse. Yes, indeed, of course. Yep. The official 
premise. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. That doesn't matter. The official premise of Tenet is uh, fighting for the survival of the entire world. And uh, a protagonist journeys through a twilight world of international espionage and a mission that will unfold in something beyond real time. So th those who play with that situation of time are really on the right spot. But this is, it's a complex story. Nevertheless, 25 words to explain. Who've seen the Joker? What's the premise of this film? Any idea? He's a crazy guy who is uh, <laughs> looking for revenge on his perceived enemy and finding ways in which he can can uh, kill him and get the better of him. Mm -hmm. Yep, indeed. Thanks, mm -hmm. indeed. He's, he's, he's mistreated by society, at least that's how he feels. And step by step, he is really going downwards. And at the end, well, he shows his real face, the Joker. Yes, traumatized boy. Thanks, Ruth. Another one. The Father. Hopefully you've seen this beautiful picture movie. What's the story of the Father? And that's not mental illness, I hope, but that's probably still the joke. Yeah. What's the story of that really great movie? It's Anthony Hopkins, a man refuses all assistance from his daughter as he ages. And he tries to learn to deal with the changed circumstances. And he begins to doubt his loved ones. And he don't know if he can really control the reality anymore. That's what is. Yes. Thanks, Jane. I really love this movie. The final one to talk about the premise that summary of the the, 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 the the script drive my car i hope you've seen this movie as well and otherwise you will have nice four new titles to watch later on drive my car is about a famous actor and director and he tries to overcome uh, the, the sudden death of his wife. And he meets a new chauffeur and they start to talk with each other and sharing see little secrets step by step. That's what Drive My Car is about. Thanks, Ilona. Young taxi driver. Yes, absolutely. Okay, besides... Uh, premise there is a second tool they use to craft a story in hollywood and that's about the high concept the high concept is that 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 um the the, the design principle it's what's really well in between all between all the lines explain that's the message that's the why of that movie and well, okay, maybe you haven't seen the four titles I shared with you, but you certainly have seen Jaws, isn't it? So what's the high concept of Jaws? Rough shark. <laughs> yeah. The official high concept of uh, Jaws is you never know what's underneath the surface. And you can also see that in the way they designed their, their poster, that poster, that to advertisement of that movie. It's in this picture already. So once again, let's play you a bit with those four movies. Tenet, Tenet again. What's the high concept of Tenet? What's that design principle? What's the why the director, the scriptwriter, why they made that movie? The music, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about Char, uh, Jaws, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Time is valuable. Yes, I like that one. You know what? When we talk about the high concept, those high concepts, they are harder to grasp. 
But if you can define it, you start to understand why scenes are created the way they are. Because yes, even for the cameraman, such a high concept is of great help. That's where craftsmanship comes together. The high concept of Tenet is you probably need to watch this twice. Mm -hmm. And I like that one because it's such a complex film. It's, it happened to me as well. Every time I keep kept on talking about this movie, days after days about those scenes and again and again, what happened? And he's looking in those two directions of time as well. So that's what in Tenet, the high concept. Any idea about the Joker? What could be the high concept of the Joker? Uh, maybe uh, anyone can, can be so good or so bad. You know, we are a, a mix of it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another option, perhaps? Society creators, nice. Yeah, yeah. We've got all have our dark and light side, indeed. Yeah, um, you can talk about the Joker as well as you never know what's underneath the surface. But that's a joke. Now, what's the official high concept of the Joker? Is look at me. He wants to be seen. Everyone wants to be seen, and that's a cry of help throughout. And you can and also those nice shots at the subways. You can see that it's, it's shot through the windows so look at me is the, what that high concept of the Joker is all about. But what about the father? What's the high concept? What's that design principle of the father? You're not in control. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, yeah. The official yeah. one, which I found is, this is your truth, although it's a nightmare. So that's part of what you said as well. Yeah. Last but not least, drive my car. The high concept of drive my car is the unending mystery of other people's lives and secrets. Meeting someone, do you really understand each other? And what does that mean? So when you talk, okay, I will show myself again because otherwise, who's talking? It's me. Um, I want to ask you to go back to your teams and together this, decide really in a minute, what's the movie you've seen all? And try to play with these two concepts. What's the premise? What's that summary? And what's the why? What's the high concept of that movie? So two simple questions after deciding, do you know this movie? Make a try to define the premise and high concept. Let's, let's see, let's give 10 minutes, 10 minutes more or less to meet and find that movie and try to describe those two principles, those two truths. Have fun. Okay. I'm going to open the rooms again. Some regular visitors of our community, I've put you in another room so I can put newcomers with you. Newcomers, don't worry. There are no sharks. They won't eat you. Just enjoy the breakout room. Okay? So there you go. And then let me see who is in the plenary. And I just move people to the rooms. Gently, I hope. Okay. It's like a very gentle dance, Union. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, let me see who is still here. Sharonda, I'm going to move you to room 12. Nice people over there for you. One little second. Mm -hmm. There you go, number 12. And I have room number three. 
Rosario, may I invite you to go to room number three? There are Adina and Cecile. You know them. Nice. <laughs> okay. We've got Claudia here. Do I have another room? I've got room number four. Uh, let me see. Uh, Fabrizio, may Room number nine, eight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got my, uh, room number four for you, Fab Fabrizio. I'm going to put you in there, and then I think we're fine here in this plenary room. Okay. You. Yeah. Claudia, why don't you stay with us? Pardon? Stay with us here in the plenary room. That's okay. <laughs> nice. Yes. Okay. Nice. You're all nice sorted room. here. Yep. Yeah. So first of all, Kurum, thank you so much for reminding me that I have some uh, films and movies to catch up with. And That's always good. Yeah, basically from uh, the Tenet one because I just love Christopher Nolan. So um, perhaps we can yeah, use yeah, yeah. The, this time this time where people are in the breakout room. So uh, when we chat uh, last week regarding the the premise and, and the high concept concepts. Um, uh, immediately, I started to link this in, into the, I would say, the most ethereal part of design thinking, like purpose, empathy, et cetera, et cetera. So you told, you told us uh, earlier that we all are storytellers, but we are also story characters in our own story. So we have premises in, your li in our life. We have high concepts. It's aspirations or needs for products and services and value. So how can we be aware of our own premises and high concepts? And how can we as design thinkers identify other people's premises and high concepts? Nice question, Hugo. And, and you, told, you told us in that first uh, breakout that you've been to the beach yesterday. So in that, that more logical explanation of what you did yesterday, you can have some kind of premise to tell okay i like to walk around and that's why i always need that horizon to fit. okay that's part of that premise of yesterday what happened but you can also look at it what why do you want to go to the beach every time that's to 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 to, to really reach out and feel relieved or you want to share something, shout out, I don't know. So the values, why you make decisions you make is what's bring you to that high concept. In this book of those 22 steps, they call it a moral argument. Why do you go to the beach instead of going to the pub? <laughs> that makes you decide what you do on a regular basis. So that's what's your design principle when it comes to your day yesterday, for instance. Mm -hmm. And that's right. something we also try to, 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 to describe when we really, as design thinkers, go and meet others to see what that, for them are the values, what, what their drivers are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes right. it in, yeah, yeah, go colleagues, go. Yeah, I, I, I just wanna, so you run uh, one thing that, um, sort of seems to stand out a little bit is that there's generally more of a consensus around the premise of a movie, for example, when you ask. Yep. Everyone knows yep. more or less what the movie's about, but when you ask what the high concept is, it seems to be a much more personalized, diverse um, expression of what the high concept is. Yeah, yeah. Even even when you when you you've been together to that movies and you talk what and so you have to explain to someone else, you always explain that premise without any hesitation. And it's much harder, and not everyone is really thinking about why did they make that movie? For what reason? Not to earn money, because that's always additional. That's next thing. What 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 made people really invest, put in energy, wanted to bring people together, uh, put that camera on, and so on and so on. There's much more, and that's what that high concept. And yes, you're right; it's a little bit more personal, so that, that it's more difficult to define one single high concept. Although um, sometimes, if you, what I do as well to prep these examples is read a lot of uh, uh, critics around those movies because 
those journalists, they have to explain a bit what the premise is, but that's boring in a pet newspaper because you're going to watch yourself. They want to explain what their director wants to tell, which is the high concept. So if you read some of those articles and, and, and look at interviews of directors, you will probably find those. But it's mm -hmm. hard. You're right. Yeah, and uh, um, regarding that, so if uh, it's more personal and everyone has his own uh, conceptualization of high high uh, concepts, so probably we can uncover some biases. That's also something that is real, very important in design thinking. So how does our biases uh, invade our perspective in terms in terms of ident identifying what people need? Because if I have a different high concept from Colin, uh, perhaps if we work together, we cannot understand a product or a service or a customer or a client in the in the design thinking ecosystem. So yeah. bi biases are uncovered with the identification of the high concepts. I think biases is part of living. So you can't you, you can try to fight them, but being aware of them is much more of help. See, okay, I'm always more connected to those people. Why? Because in some way you feel you know that this, that that we have some some values in common. That's the start of creating empathy as well. Don't don't make it don't don't be too blindfolded at the same time. So challenge or help and bring others to, to, to bring and to keep the, 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 the validation, so to speak. Yeah, cool. That's perfect. Perhaps, perhaps Hugo, um, if I could just clarify from you, so you're into ask again, this idea of bias uh, related to high concept, isn't that about um, we, def we kind of see and identify a high concept based on our own life experiences, our own culture, all these things that influence us and give us our own unique perspective and lens in the world. Um, yeah, ex ex exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's it's uh, the question here is how to balance that with the empathy that we need in order to understand the others. So, how can we not be in some kind of blind spots regarding that? So, Yurun, mm. let me ask you a question, Yurun, to follow up with that. Is I, I know that you sometimes refer to the high concept. You also call it the design principle, isn't it? Yeah. 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 When you and and. And because that can help to explain why you make some kind of decisions. And um, when it comes to creating a, a, a play or a movie, you need to, in some way, synchronize a lot of people. And having that, that, that design principle in the middle will help to move the energy in some way. Hmm. Does it help you, Colin? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You also um, mentioned the word purpose. So I think Hugo mentioned as well, this idea of we find purpose in the high concept in the design principle. Yeah. And the premise uh, yeah. is something that supports um, yeah. the purpose. So we can identify purpose as, a, as something that we strive towards and the premise enables and carries it. Is that right? Indeed, yeah, and 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 so make that comparison to design thinking. You've got those uh, nice sheets to, to explain the problem statement, and you always talk about immediate goal and deeper emotional goal. It's that story to be told, simple premise as what 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 are the actions, and that deeper emotional goal is the purpose. It's the why. So you can use those high concept and premise to 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 try to define it in different way, and that makes it come alive if that's the good mix as well because that's of course something else these two should be in some way in a logic a fit in a logical way as well although playing with them compared to that those different plots oh, where where can you see it no, it's hard. Those seven plots of course having a comedy in in in, in uh, about a story in, in World War II, you know some of those examples, can be interesting that there is a huge tension between that plot and the way that, and, and, and it's, it's purposely high concept or the moral argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, one more minute. 
one more minute. So, yeah. but any last words for this slot, of course? <laughs> I hope they don't come all with Titanic. <laughs> Did you say Titanic? Because that's, that's happening a lot. So Titanic is one of those... It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a they, possibility, they like It's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Never let Perhaps go, Jack. It's not a favorite. <laughs> Perhaps, <laughs> the Perhaps ask Cla Claudia first, uh, or Mila or Lisa, yeah. What, which movie would you choose? The game. You? The game <laughs> by... Do you want to tell... I, I haven't watched it, but like, what is it? <clears throat> about a game with michael douglas in the main character but i don't know the director <laughs> no neither do i i don't have all those names uh, <laughs> immediately. oh yeah. wow really Arun? <laughs> no sorry i haven't seen all the movies i don't why? like to see all those movies why <laughs> <laughs> So people are coming back and they are smiling. They are with such a good energy. So nicely done for that. Mm -hmm. um, so let us wait. I think, uh, Jungen, that we all are all here. So um, Harun, uh, before you connect yes. us with the storytelling and design thinking, perhaps uh, three or four minutes for people to, brain to brainstorm in the chat which were the movies or and sorry premises and high concepts that arise or arose in the in the several in the several rooms so you can use the chat for that okay just write it don't press enter and on my signal we will see in the chat so just write the movie uh the premise that you were involved with and the high concept okay so i think and then we will give you some seconds yeah to do it sorry it's all we have and then we will brainstorm the, the chat and then we have here some organic conversations for three or four minutes so when you are ready, do not press the enter yet, okay? Sorry, me. Just 30 more seconds. Svarina is just... Please let me. Please let me. <laughs> okay, okay, people, you can press enter. Let us see what we have came up with. Whoa. <laughs> My trick is pretty <laughs> Titanic. Pretty Woman, uh, Matrix. Okay, so. Okay, Matrix. Sound of Music premise. So cool. So, I will let you. I will let you browse the the chat in order to see what's came up and free feel to comment. Kedum also to comment and yes. to, to, get, to get some insights. Oh, the Goodfellas. Yeah. The very yeah. nice. Movie. Titanic always under always on the rise. It's all a so these kind of, this this these exercises yeah. around movies. I already uh, predicted that. Um, okay, um, and let's. Pre and um, pretty woman uh, too. Adela, times. the sound of music. Can you share with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, I want to hear Adela, for instance, the premise, the immersion of the war into people's lives and the way it impacts them, which end concept, the artist is a savior. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Um, what happened yeah, in, the, actually, in your breakup room? Yeah, and actually we have spoken about two movies and came up with the same uh, conclusion for both of them. It was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, The Sound of Music and uh, La Vita e Bella. <laughs> But we, we focus at the end of The Sound of Music because uh, all three of us have seen this one. And uh, well, the premise is this change, uh, the, this major change in people's life, the war is coming and things that used to, um, to, to work in a certain way suddenly were impacted and, uh, and changed. And the high end concept in our opinion was that, that music 
is a savior. M music actually, it's something that has saved people, which is common uh, with uh, La Vita e Bella, but there we put it like art. This is why we put it arts, not only music, because in the other uh, movie was drama as saving the life of the people in the camp. That was our story and our uh, conclusion. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, in the meantime, I found finding Nemo as well very interesting. Cheryl, can you share with us what happened in your breakout about finding Nemo? So, sure. Um, so, it was one of the three movies that we talked about in our breakout room. Um, it is my favorite movie. Anytime I can use a Finding Nemo quote in my day, I'm having a good day. The premise, if you're not familiar, is that a son and father have a fight. The son sort of doesn't listen to him, gets kidnapped. And Marlon runs into Dory and the search for his son. But to me, the premise is that family isn't just blood. It's those that you choose to surround yourself with that make all the difference. Thanks. Yes, I fully understand. Yeah. And just because Hugo wants to talk about Pretty Woman as well, so uh, the law... Can you share what happened in your breakout room in relationship to the premise and high concept of Pretty Woman? So we went for Pretty Woman because we had to go for a movie really old time that we all knew it after all your fresh uh, movies. So we had uh, the premises uh, rich tycoon meets prostitute and they transform each other's lives. And we also had the question, can there be a second sub premise and the same with the high uh, concept. With the high concept, what we had as a main one, and I also want to double check, uh, what is it, what is it, uh, oh, Adina wrote it. Yes, we can always become better versions of ourselves, or anyone can become a better version of themselves. And as a sub high concept, we had, you can't judge a person from her clothes, you can't judge a book from his cover. So that's the question, can you have this sub, high concept or smaller high concept along the main message. Are you there? I don't know if it's if, if it's my at my side, but you you broke apart a bit. Uh, can you repeat your question, Rosaria, please? So we had as major high concept, anyone can become the better self uh, version of themselves. Yep. And then we were wondering, yep. can you have also sub high concepts such as you can judge a person from her clothes, which was also kind of a uh, message that was coming to the entire movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, we had a conversation in the plenary room as well that those high concepts are harder to define. And it can become a more personal interpretation as well of the meaning. The, 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 the moral argument is another way of talking about the high concept. And that can, that can lead to different kind of opinions what the high concept is about. Yep. It's also more difficult to de define them. That premise is always as well what you tell to your friends what the movie about. You just tell that premise, isn't it, most often? And you don't really share that much why it really matters that movie and maybe why it triggered you as well so that's on that different kind of level and that's exactly as well what i want to discuss with you here in the group because i use that premise that high concept quite often in my design thinking uh, uh, processes because we like to talk about the design thinking as storytelling anyway You've got your hero, your, your journey maps to make. So that's also really already quite an extensive way of trying to write a script. But I think storytelling in, 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 in general, but these two concepts can be of help as well when it comes to, to having a better understanding, creating more empathy, 
one of the two watchers main stakeholders. So I'm curious and let's use the chat again. Let's use the chat again to, to, to share some ways you would these two principles in your own professional world. And um, yes, thanks, Mim. So, and concept, be of help in the design process. At what, which moment, perhaps, or in which specific, or as an addition to a, a tool, a step in the process. Put them in the chat, please. And let's not make it into that waterfall this time because then we can build on what people share and see if we can ideate, inspire each other a bit. Visuals, yes, of course. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Of course, there's already the difference between the how and the why, the how, the, 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 the story and the why, the reason, the purpose, the high concept. Yeah, value canvas. Okay, that's another one. Thank you, God. Yeah. Cheryl, how you, you, you mentioned the persona and the user experience mapping. Can you, can you explain a bit more what you, how would you, <laughs> um, add that to that to those steps those two so i think being able to tell the high concept right adds that value to the persona how you know what am i feeling what am i trying to solve for there there's just it allows you to sort of put yourself in the persona or the user's shoes a little more effectively mm -hmm. when you add the value of a story mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Claudia, you go to that solution finding space and say after ideation. Tell me, what do you mean? <clears throat> I mean, um, with these two uh, questions, you can focus on what you mean and uh, what someone had with the idea, the connection to the purpose. And uh, I think it helps. Uh, speaking out um, more about the idea so that it's in a second step it's easier to have an idea of the whole group what was really the usefulness or the the behind uh, thinking of the idea yeah yeah so that's probably as well what Kerry is referring to it articulates the deeper meaning and let's move <laughs> we're going from start to finish and backwards Mike you say at the start of a session can you help me what do you mean by applying these two principles at the start of a session I think if, like in the way that we were discussing the movie almost giving a summary of what the session will entail and then also giving that like higher meaning in a way, like why are we doing this session? So that you yeah, take a step mm -hmm. back, look at it holistically before you then go into the different uh, steps or tools that you might use in this session. Yeah, thanks. Priti, Munot, is that what you mean by well? Sorry, I couldn't hear. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Yeah. So what does that I mean? Whenever we go for a new product development, if the vision we can articulate properly, that we can engage a different stakeholders team. And that may be more effective when the people know what they are doing and why they are doing it. So I think it's very important that vision we can articulate in the way of storytelling. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. So these two principles can be of use to create that or to clarify, to, to elaborate on that vision too. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Really nice. Well, of course, I already experienced that it can be applicable at many moments and not only these two tools, but storytelling in general. That's why 
here in the Wednesday Web Jam, we love to talk about uh, uh, storytelling anyway. Um, I think it's let's let's wrap up this session. Hugo, um, what's next? Because we're not done yet. Yeah, so first of, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, Heron, for your insightful uh, sharings and for, for the, for, yeah, it, it was really marvel, marvel to, to, to dig in the storytelling ecosystem and to see how its structures and components can, can relate to our uh, pers personal and professional life. So I would like to thank you uh, a lot. Uh, also for uh, putting us to think which kind of movies are we missing out and, and which kind of movies do you want to see and those that, that you we want to see again and thank you also for that uh, for for facilitating facilitating this conversation regarding the connection and linking with the storytelling concept with the design thinking tools approaches etc etc so this is where this is uh, was very valuable and insightful and I would like to thank you uh, for 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 being here thank you thank uh, anyone uh, everyone that is also present here after the after the holidays so we will resume our continuous rhythm so weekly we will be failing forward and now i will uh, pass the torch to union because she also yes, yes. has something to announce and to <laughs> share with us Thank you, thank you. I want that torch because we have a lot of newcomers today. And I need to explain to you that if you come into our community, you are also very welcome to submit your idea for a topic. Um, it can be quirky, it can be funny, it can be deeply serious. Think about it and this is the place where you can find it to submit it. Then, like us, Follow us. We are all over uh, on the social socials. We got a whole social media team that is promoting our web gems, uh, and um, we are a volunteer-run um, group. I shouldn't say organization. A bit too scary. <laughs> How do we do it? We do it um, um, by uh, hunting down your digital coins in your digital wallet. So. If you have some coins in your wallets this week, spend it on us, spend it on Kovi, and we will use it to cover our costs to run these web gems. Okay, then now, this is a slide that actually is a very new one. Do count the heads. Yes, meaning we have a few newcomers here. We have a few newcomers here. And I am going to introduce to you, first of all, again, Hugo. Hugo is my mentee. In the, in the crew, we have adopted a mentor-mentee system to onboard newbies in the crew who can run with us these shows. So your mentor says about you, Hugo, the gap guy the guy who understands we need a break and we need to break our patterns and habits habits once in a while and that's exactly what you are going to do for us in the crew surprises to be expected from your mental union all right who's the next one that is elizabeth yes that's elizabeth and she's not with us today but her mentor mark says is Elizabeth is a quiet force that can move mountains. She brings a well of patience, steady energy, and creativity to the WWJ crew from Mentor Mark. Now you know already, Swarina, you're the next one. Sit tight there, yeah. You are a quiet, you are not a quiet, sorry. You bring your creative spark and full heart to our WWJ village. With your ideas, vibrant vibes, and enthusiasm, you will continue taking us to new fun learning moments from your mentor, Jimena. Yeah. Leaving us to Colin. So this one is a little tricky one. I need to concentrate myself on Colin's dog. No, on Colin. Okay, there we go. It's more than 100 weeks since Colin's been with us. 
Wednesday Web Jam welcomes you in the crew. This is the time to celebrate. We all should be so loud. Wednesday Web Jam welcomes you in the crew. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, newcomers in the crew, thank you so much for joining us and for the audience. If you think, is this all? No, not at all. Because next week, we will have Lashita Petwadu. And I hope I pronounce his names all right. What do you know about Web3? What should you know? Is it here already? Who's using it? <laughs> what am I missing out? I don't know. That's why I come back again. I'll be there and Lashita will talk us through this. So please register, come again and listen to Lasita next week. Back to you, Hugo, to take us into backstage. Yeah, the backstage. So the, that's a wrap. So uh, we, uh, you are all, all welcome to stay with us and chat, have conversations, to ask questions, to deliver answers, just to vent anything regarding storytelling, design thinking, or where any kind of subject that is I would say linked to to that. Okay, so we will be, uh, before be... before before you do that. Goodbye to YouTube. Wave goodbye to YouTube. Bye. Yeah, so...